go. Yo, 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 raid. Everybody is raiding. Nobody plays a Sonya volcano. Raiden was Christopher Lambert. Hot damn, do I love this community. You guys really are the best. Brian, off air, you're saying they were the worst. Oh, sorry, we're on air. I'm not supposed to say that. <laughs> Let me just say, I love everyone but one person in this community. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hi, everybody. We're going to get started with Weird Things in here in just a minute. Thanks again, Justin, for, uh, for the raid. He'll be on... In a few minutes. Hey, while uh, Justin's not here, you want to talk politics? Yeah. Not particularly. Okay. Yeah. I mean, what's up? Well, I, I, uh, I, uh, right, right now, the the polls that be have it a, a substantial lead for Biden uh, uh, by what seven points or something. Like uh, it's, it's, that. Mm, I don't know if that number is. Is that is that the most recent number? Uh, the, oh, I don't know. This is when the conversation we were having. And then I looked to the prediction markets and the prediction markets where people are betting actual money also still has him favored. Uh, and then I look at the map and it's like blue states swinging way blue, red states swinging way red. And then there's this barely blue, almost gray state rhymes with the word schmorda. <laughs> and I realized, Oh my God! This is gonna be another Florida election. <laughs> like, like with just enough, like those electoral votes alone are gonna be enough to swing this thing. It's all gonna oh, come down to Florida it, again. It's gonna be Florida times fifty. Yeah, it's gonna be. Sure. Everybody's sort of bracing themselves for the idea. We ain't gonna know election night. Yeah, you know. Oh yeah, I mean, with the number of of you know states that are you know allowing mass mail-in ballots, I mean, they're not gonna be counted by the night. Let, let, probably even a week afterwards. Um, yeah, but there's still a margin gonna, for error with those, yeah. then you gotta, uh, Then you got to eliminate all the folks who voted twice just to be sure. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be... Well, uh, and yeah. Buckle up. You know, uh, <laughs> apparently, some people just get to do felonies and say... You just get to say... You can just, some people just get to say whatever they want, I guess. Some people just get to uh, tell people on a nationwide platform to commit a felony. To, and that itself is a felony, who, and it's cool. It's who totally is this? Give, give who me is this? a break. <laughs> oh, uh, 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 Trump apparently said. Said, hey, if oh, I... If, no, you got to go read the tweet. Go read the tweet, guys. Oh, oh is, 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 is that what he says? Yeah. No, it was, it was you go check the, if, it, if it was counted. If not, then ask for a provisional ballot. Well, uh, mm. Wait, what? No, say it. Don't do. Oh, no, no I no, heard this. The, if you're going to say it, say it. The, the Trump quote that I heard was, if their mail-in system is so great, vote twice. Uh, it was vote and it was vote by mail and then go to your polling place and see if they'll let you vote. And if they'll this let you, a tweet do you saw. This is a tweet you saw from him. No, it was a no this is bite. not. That wasn't a tweet. That was uh, him being interviewed uh, outside of Air Force One doing a, a, a something in North Carolina. Uh, it, it It's there's probably Trump. a better word it's, than it's, tweet. It's, it's, no, it's I, Trump. I believe yeah, that. No, it's 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 Trump talking. Uh, yeah. We're going to see, and, and, and just to say, like, from both sides, every candidate, we're going to see so much craziness coming up, you know, you know, that we've, you know, the, remember the birtherism started, you know, in the Hillary versus Obama primary that it got brought up again, and we're going to get all of this stuff. So even if it's like somebody you like or whatever, it's just, it's going to get crazy with just. Because like, you have all these other p political action groups, all this other stuff. Every anybody oh, yeah. who has money to buy an ad campaign, say some crazy stuff about Biden or Trump or that. And let's let's <clears throat> not walk past the my thesis. Florida, it's a Florida election. Uh, oh, I, you yeah. thought if Florida two thousand was a Florida election? You ain't seen nothing yet. This Florida no, we, is gonna Florida like Florida is never Florida. That's been for last couple weeks of twitter that's been a thing is everybody's saying get ready you know there's going to be the, the supreme court's going to have to decide this one and like 
Mm -hmm. Holy cow. Um, like, and Andrew, can you do me a favor and just uh, uh, refresh your video for me on Skype? Just stop it and start it again. Yeah, sorry. It's fine. Or buy the uh, Starbucks. There we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Someone check that you're not on <laughs> your Wi-Fi. <laughs> 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 oh man everyone have a good oh, weekend dude it was great it was quiet uh i really needed it uh it's one of those things where um you don't really know you need a thing until you got it it's the reverse of don't know what you got until it's gone don't know yeah. what you have until it's there uh, uh justin what about you uh yeah good weekend <laughs> got um uh like most of Raise the Dead is, uh, oh, season two, uh, first week of October. I'll have more specifics in the next Ooh. week, but uh, Raise the Dead season two going to be come out first week of October. Have, um, have you thought about, but, but a, yeah, finished, finished them mostly. Have, have you thought about A-B te testing just the first five minutes, like to everybody who's on your list? Like, hey, what, what opening do you like more? What, oh, what geez, Brian. <laughs> Brian. I mean, not not to throw more work on you, but 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 I suspect. Uh... <laughs> let me let me let me just say this. Uh, I try to be very uh, considerate of my friends' time, and uh, I I try to not harp too much on people's uh, uh, time to listen to it. I will say that with this show like it's it's hard it's hard to get people to listen to anything it's hard to get people to listen to it on time it hard, it's hard to get people to listen to it on um you know uh in in the numbers that would actually make sense and um i yeah i mean i i changed the first five minutes of the uh first episode and i think it's stronger having listened to it and gotten gotten further away from it it was one of those kill your darling situations and so uh i you know, at this point, it's like, you know, maybe maybe in a world where there's a little bit more to this operation than just uh, me little old banging, me. And banging, yeah. banging, <laughs> banging the cymbals between sure, my knees sure. and uh, playing the bagpipes and the harmonica at the same time. Which I thought was a great choice for the soundtrack, by the way. I really <laughs> exactly, thought that was. Yeah. Uh, the mouth trumpet no, the was, sound, yeah, was the soundtrack. Divine. I guess I, I guess I can say this. Carson Pace of uh, the Callous Dow Boys math rock superstar rock god uh, uh has uh original score this is going to be something that is yeah. is originally scored uh for i mean i would great. say about 80 80 percent of the music in there is him nice. there's like a few uh things including uh what i think is kind of it's awesome it's it's like a dark version of the theme song which is uh which is really cool, but uh, I'm thrilled. He keeps just sending me stuff, and I just plug it in, and I'm like, "Oh wow, I don't, I sound good now." What an amazing concept. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, uh, Andrew, really quick, how was your weekend? My weekend was um, fun. I spent my time doing a couple different courses online, so that's the way I like to spend my time. And also sweating my testicles off. You were not. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> I mean, they're still there, right? I'm nope. Sweating. For Brian, now. For thanks now. for bringing it up, Brian. <laughs> um, um, is what, your AC on, Andrew? No, it's not. I would like it to be on. Oh. What uh, what courses? Uh, so I've been. I you know I took several courses in machine learning a couple mm -hmm. years ago, and then now there's been a shift to some of the new tools. You know, PyTorch is a new tool people use for a lot of it, a framework for like doing you know uh, work with like ML and deep learning and stuff. So I was learning more about how to use PyTorch. So it's like a Python sort of thing that helps you do that stuff. So uh, Penny has gotten you know she's 16 and she's not so much feeling the going to church thing and uh we made a trade where it's like uh okay you don't have to go to church but you have to sit with your dad and listen to the great courses uh bart ehrman's course on the historical jesus and it's like uh, uh you have to you have to learn the story of how the story came to be and man such a good course and he's so good and uh it's it's really a fascinating uh experience to uh to, to re-experience that story 
uh, with, uh, with, you know, my 17 year old kid is cool. Yeah. I mean, it, there's so much wonderful stuff out there and even like some of the best stuff I've learned has come from like YouTube courses and stuff. And it's just, it's just amazing. The quality, the overall quality of teachers now, I think has improved dramatically when you go outside of traditional systems, let's say, not to say that I would, I don't, I don't, I would say it's probably the same as it has been. Yeah, no, I, I, I think, I think he's a, a university Chapel Hill or whatever. I mean, he's got the, 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 the bona fides, but, uh, but, but regardless, like even outside of that, uh, people who are just doing think pieces, uh, uh, who maybe don't have a bunch of letters or pieces of paper that look fancy. Well, we even still, you take somebody like him who now, because of this, you have a platform for, if you went to Chapel Hill, you would have been lucky to have this person as your professor. Right. right? If and you, now if you went to some school. All of us get yeah, to. Yeah, if you went to some school 30 miles away, you got somebody else who'd been there for 20 years and maybe did all the politics right within the faculty lounge. And now oh, I think we should have Red Punch, you know, the you know, meeting. And then um, that's your professor. And maybe they're not as good as this other one, but here's this brilliant professor now, but a lot of people can learn from. I love that. Uh, okay, I think we're ready to go. Uh, uh, one thing, Andrew, I, and I, I know it's pre-show, so uh, but just add that that we can hear the kind of clicking from your. Oh, can you? Can you hear this, Bryce? Is it bothering you? Because you know, Miss Pony is a real affliction. I have a reverse ASMR. I was going to do my five cube here, Bryce. That's just a friendly reminder. Okay, are you guys good to go? Yeah, do it. Put in my puzzles away <laughs> thank right. you all right we'll start the show in three two hello and welcome to weird things i made your main joined by justin robert young hello brian brushwood yo buddy yo buddy yo buddy yo and bryce no fun <laughs> oh, i made him put his toys away before we started the podcast <laughs> i i <laughs> <laughs> I have, I, have been, I found myself like I'm doing been doing a lot of like online courses and stuff lately and so I spent a lot of time sitting at my desk watching and I am one of these people like I can't just sit still and it used to be like oh I'd have a deck of cards or whatever like that and uh, I don't do that so much anymore so it first started with like a Rubik's cube and then it started with like a pyramid cube and then like some crazy the 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 crazy the Rubik's cube that's like like the three different sized shaped layers that unfolds into like a Borg ship, and so I sit there and I watch these things. And I just fiddle with this, and so right before the show, I, you know my my annoying habit, you know, I, I just like ah, I think for for just, just be, like twenty dollars or whatever, you could get something that'll uh, put a little gate action on there where where you it sort of filters out any of the background noise. We, we do some gating. We already. Oh, we're we already we're already doing so. our best. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We we Bryce had, is like don't encourage we're, him. We're, <laughs> uh, we we had talked off of one of the shows a few weeks ago about maybe getting some fidget cubes in here to like have something so you're not like distracted by other stuff right. during the shows. And so I ordered one for myself at home, and I realized oh we definitely can't do that because they're not silent. Right, like uh, they're they're all meant to click and whir. Some and of them spin are and some of them are audible. And... Some of them are not audible. Yeah, and so I know I've been at home the past week just <laughs> with the little <laughs> auto switch. Just... I I I literally I have like these two pens, these two like sharpie markers that I will just like I will just fiddle with like throughout the streams, like just if I'm editing or whatever. Like I just have to have a little thing that can. Let's with, I wonder like, is that, is that a sign of our modern era or would, did everybody always just need to fiddle with stuff? And, and now we just have a, a business around it and we're feeding it. I, I, I think it was always there. Like there was always that dude in debate class who could spin a, 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 a pencil around his thumb and catch it. Right. Like you knew Todd too. Yeah. Right. I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's a primate thing. I think it's just that, like, it, if we're doing work where our hands are being preoccupied, fine. But otherwise, it is that 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 urge to explore our environment, to test things, and to sort of do things. And you see this, too, with other intelligent animals. Like, you know, dolphins do that. They probe things, test things around. And I, you know, I, when, I think I mentioned this before. Do they when, ever. And like, I, yeah. <laughs> when I did the shark thing for discovery channel like the great whites would come up and explore like hey this cable holding your submersible <laughs> what's mm. this made of nom 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 they're curious about stuff and so i think it's just this wolves dogs you see dogs like sniff stuff around 
remember the uh you know with the Neuralink demo with the snout boops oh you sure know, yeah the pig snout you know oh, i think so. I, th I think i missed all of that i saw the headline last... on the Neuralink demo no i think we, we, watched we talked it about together. it last week yeah uh well here show me the snout boop okay well i need another minute okay yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, that just kind of shows that, yeah, intelligent animals like to probe their environment. You know, they're, we're here, we're playing with pens. Yeah. Is that, is that a bad thing? Oh, that's right. I do. I do recall this. Um, the, uh, uh, is like, should we feel guilty? <laughs> Does it make us yes, bored? We should, feel, we should feel horrible, Brian. I mean, with, with kind of the virtualization of work between, like, computers and, and keyboards and stuff, like, it probably makes sense that there's, like, just some muscle memory, like, like there's a, it's lower activity to do your work throughout the day, and so having, I don't know, having more actions yeah. to do. You want to know what? I guess I, I, I hadn't thought of that, that, like, in an era where I was doing more physical things, like... You know, there were, I just have much less tactile uh, responsibilities. And so now maybe some of that bleeds over into uh, to a clicky fidgeting pen. with this, with this, uh, this thing. No, I can't do the clicky pen because I just know that that'll be like, I, I just know that if I start screwing around with the clicky pen, then the world will know how uh, uh, I, I am unable so to focus on can't, anything. You can't. You can't do that. <laughs> that's, a, yeah. not, that's a yellow card. <laughs> no, what are you doing? I, I pulled out this 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 it's this puzzle box that unfolds in like these crazy shapes. Yeah, my problem is like I'll be watching a video and then like I'll have like a cube in my hand and like I'm like ah, oh, I mean I gotta get this piece over here. Da, 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 da. And I look up and like three minutes have passed. I have no idea what just happened and I have to rewind it. Like, well, and okay. I, I think that I guess what we're doing is we're finding something to occupy ourselves when. All we want to do is burst in and talk, but we know we must not. And so for me, the habit seems to be like a, like an oral fixation of just constantly taking sips of whatever beverage is in front of me, uh, which of course leads to a, <laughs> a moment, like the moment the camera's not on me, I'm taking a sip of something. And then uh, the moment I have the opportunity, I'm like, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. And it's like, it's silly, but, it, it 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 gives me something to do, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Well, look at uh. Remember, if you watch old episodes of Johnny Carson on the Tonight Show, <sighs> those guys got see, to smoke. Oh, if we didn't see, we but should like, all start smoking. But when it became unfashionable, you would see the cigarette smoke and the higher. When you look at like on a better quality tape, you would see the cigarette smoke rising from the behind the desk <sighs> because they, smoke they off put camera. the ashtray. Yeah, he'd be behind in between scenes, be puffing away, and then put it there. And then sometimes he'd interview. If you look in the corner, you'd see this little smoke dripping there. Oh Letterman God. with a cigar. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Weirdly, uh, Larry Sanders just has a big old ashtray that uh, so far has never been used for anything ever. Yeah, I think that's right. <laughs> that's yeah, that's the amazing. HBO sitcom. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hmm. uh, uh, any, anybody cut their own hair? Not yet, man. Uh, I did. Uh, I did re up on my uh, minoxidil. I'm digging. I'm digging these these hair lush pill? locks. Yeah. Well, it's the it's a it's a spray, and Bonnie picks them up. Uh, it, it is ridiculously cheap now. So she, she picks them up, and it's just a spray. But then only after we got it did we see it says warning, uh, herbal blend, very pungent. And we're like, well, how bad can it? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it's bad enough that they have to print it on the box because yeah. they never would do so, it on their own. So we immediately got some like mint flavored or whatever. So whenever I'm wearing a hat, I'm just like, all right, let's just use this stuff up <laughs> and then hide it under the hat. But uh, I, I, I think I'm going to I think I'm going to go all the way. I think I'm going to come out the other side with uh, with with Sawyer hair. Now, from, one of us is, is looking especially fresh today. Oh, Andrew, yeah. You are. are you the one who cut their own hair? Mm -hmm. I cut my own hair. I how, cut my own hair. How'd you do it? Scissors? Well, I just I didn't know if this was a setup for no, like no, I got no, the no, vacuum no, like, thing like or a YouTube something. YouTube video yeah, no, or I, I sat I, in a chair and it decapitated me. My hair gets really frizzy in back, like really, really. And normally, I would, if I could just have that trimmed, and I'd ask my girlfriend like, "Oh, you cut my hair?" She's like, "No, I like it long." I'm like, "I think you're just trying to keep me unattractive and ugly." Um, <laughs> so uh, I uh, I. I'm like, I just, I ordered some clippers and I had some scissors and then 
I'm like, I'm just going to cut it. Like, I'm just, I just need to cut it. And I, I looked at a YouTube video. And yeah, watched a couple called that YouTube one. Videos. Yeah. And I, so I went in there, watched the video. I'm like, all right, I think I got this. And went <laughs> on the sides, did that. And then yeah. chim, 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 chim. I'm like, holy cow, other than the back, which does not look good. Hard to do the back. Um, Always hard to do your yeah, own back. back. Yeah, back. It's like, I've got an idea on how to do the back next time, though. But I'm like, I'm like, this is not the worst haircut I ever had. No, it's it looks pretty clean, like, and and it's a simple do, you know, gracefully, like it looks nice. Uh, yeah, thank you. The last week of production on Modern Rogue, Jason walks up and says, uh, "Hey, you ever have a one of those moments where you're just trying to fix one little thing and you fix it and you realize, ah, oh, I kind of overdid it. Let me fix it on the other side, and you you keep on and uh, and I'm yeah. like, yeah, 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 no yeah. ball, yeah, sure." Uh, uh, and then before you know it, you're like, yeah, yeah, no, I've been there. He goes, so anyway, and he pulls off his hat and there's like a, a Cupid doll tuft <laughs> at the top. Ah! <laughs> like that's all that's left. And he goes, I bought four hats. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, he grew yeah. into, he, 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 I think he figured out how to style it by the end of that shoot. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but it yeah, was a it was great story. <laughs> <laughs> like any story that ends where the punchline is you remove your hat is, uh, mm, chef's kiss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I think I might, I think I might go get a, my hair cut by a professional. Okay. Cause it's legal now. It's Nancy legal Pelosi's do. doing it. Nancy Pelosi oh, yeah. was the brave freedom fighter <laughs> that broke the, uh, the 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 monopoly here in Alameda and San Francisco counties. Even for the Bay Area, we are the last holdouts for everything, and that included indoor salon stuff. So Nancy Pelosi got her uh, got her hair blown out, and uh, uh, sure enough, within 24 hours, Alameda County's like, sure, that's fine. Yeah, we can open up barber shops again. So I literally just I, went to my I, I, w- I went to my uh, barber's website and they have appointments now listed in in their big open air. They open the the, the front and it would I, I would feel safe in terms of air circulating. It would, it's effectively outside, so I would be I'd be very very happy. I'll be yeah, happy I, to get I a professional haircut. For mine, to, for mine to open and they did, and I'm like, fine, I'll cut it, and I cut it. And then I, I finished it. I'm like, I need to get some gel. I'm like, I'll go across the street, go get some gel. I go outside, I walk, I look over. Now open. I'm like, oh, jeez. It's like an O'Henry story. You know, it was just this, it, they're waiting for me. Like, all right. Mm-hmm. Hey, gentlemen, um, look up in the sky. Another roach? Oh. Uh, I mean, it's definitely just my well, ceiling. I'm, I'm ceiling. No, I see, I see the sky. He's yeah, Brian does I'm have a skylight view, so maybe if, if that's, that's Brian why. can help you. Would you out. like me to describe it? Uh, the clouds are beautiful. There, there, there's a family. They're having a birthday. Is it still blue up there? Uh, yes, no, and there's so much to live for, Bryce. Don't give up. Uh, <laughs> it looks like they're putting up a banner. Somebody's graduating. Remember little Timmy? I was telling you about little Timmy. He's I, graduating. Oh, okay. Congrats, Timmy. Yeah. Whatever you do, don't kill me to try to take my spot. <laughs> what the? Because so in other okay. news. Uh, yeah. we had a report, uh, this was last week, which was pilot landing at LAX reports guy and jetpack flight near plane. Oh my God. I heard Airlines. this just, just cash, cash. Like, yo bro. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. You know, traffic control and pilots are always super calm. That's why when you see something in a movie where people like panic, like, no, that ain't real. Um, so, uh, yeah, apparently there's a report of like, yeah, we're, we see some guy who looks like he has a jet pack flying by us. <laughs> now, now, now we're, we're, we're talking about one of those simple, like, uh, I forget which gas it is. Like, oh, I want to say it's, um, uh, swamp gas. No, 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 no. Like, uh, <laughs> uh hydrogen dioxide or something. Um, uh, but, 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 but basically it's just straight up air being released, like, like two tanks, super pressurized. And you just go up. Uh, what are you? What if? What are you basing this on? Uh, the Fall Guy from the okay. 1980s. Oh, all right, all right. No, this is three thousand miles up. Three thousand feet up. There's okay, three thousand miles up. Oh god. Yeah, good god. Three thousand feet up. It's it was Elon Musk in there. <laughs> it was. It was three thousand feet up. Wow. So and I so I did see this headline when it came in, and they didn't find anybody. Right? There's no suspect. Right? Is... No, no, they, they, wow. they, but I have one for you. It's the Rocketeer. 
Well, that was, yeah, I actually got, I, I made a dumb tweet about like, you know, Tony Stark on a bill for comment. I got picked up by one of these sort of like smaller news sites and stuff. I'm like, reactions <laughs> include. Um, <laughs> like, nah. like, like it wasn't that good of a joke. Um, but here, I'm going to send you something, Bryce, because I'm going to show you something brought up something uh, that might be kind of cool. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's like, imagine being the pilot that has to report that. Like, like, man, like there's the joke that like you know they tell you you got to report to you know the your you know the flight supervisor's office and they're like yeah bring bring your bring your your your, your flight certificate and a lighter and a lighter yeah the idea is that they're gonna burn it up you know, oh oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh check this out hey so, uh andrew Bryce. while you're doing that can we can we take a quick pause can you disconnect and double check that we've got the right microphone set for you because i'm not con i'm actually concerned we maybe don't yeah, it says the right one. The toner audio. I just want me to disconnect and restart. Can, can you tap it for? Or tap your microphone for me. Just... Yeah, it looks like it's the wrong one. It yeah. still says that there. It's yeah, your, I it's know. your opal. Yeah, it, right, it'll do that this. if you could just try and reselecting it for me. Mm. Giving him a minute. Thank you, everybody, for waiting. For the record, mm -hmm. hey, there it is. It was opal. I know. Opal did it. I know. Opal's the liar. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, okay, so we got a, uh, we've got this video here. You want to take a look at it? Oh my God, there's video. No, not of that, but of oh, ju suspect. just of this. Okay, of something. So we see Jetman Dubai take off. Wow. Whoa. So he's got like uh, wings. He's got is a, it's a man with like airplane wings. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we it 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 looks uh, like that 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 hydrogen peroxide, you know, kind of kind of gassing. Uh, which which works, of course, because you know it's not burning your legs off as you're flying, but but with the advantage of uh, having wings. So I guess when it runs out, you can. Uh, well, no, uh, it's not the pro the prox. I think is like thirty seconds. This is jet turbines. This is wow. jet fuel and turbines. What? Jet Holy fuel? Cow. Yeah, no, the, the yeah the prox I think is wow. it's not really that's that was like they'd use that for like give you like thirty seconds of flight. This is what we've seen Jetman before, uh, wow. Rossi or whatever. So he's got four turbines strapped to a wing, which is loaded with fuel. And so with the wings, it almost makes, uh, I don't know, it kind of makes me think that he should be like in a Superman pose, you know, his well, back watch. parallel to the ground. He's, he's standing upright right now. The wings are outright. He's just, he just floated off of like a pier and like the, the water near Dubai. Mm -hmm. And so now he's hovering over the water and there's like a drone capturing this. And he's going to do a couple flights. Then it's going to get like really crazy in a minute or so. But he's got several minutes of flight time with this, which is huh. like crazy. And then I mean, I guess get... if, if, if you have a limited range of a few minutes to fly, uh, my okay. guess is you would want to make sure those were around an airport so that you had a place to land. Sure. And or he's water. doing this over the water. So, you know, and there's a All safety right. boat there. It's it's this is just the test flight, guys. This is just making sure everything's running right. Oh my yeah. god! There's a now lot. Now watch, of... watch. Oh, that's a superhero flying. Oh, he's super. That's a legit it. superhero just flying off. Wow. Towards Dubai. Holy, Holy cow! Wow. Holy cow! <laughs> that's. And this was February of this year. Like this is recent. Yeah. I mean, this can't be far from becoming like the new kiteboarding where it's like, ah, these guys again, like I'm flying around in yeah. their jetpacks. We're seeing the whole Palm Island in Dubai. Yeah. He's so high up now. You can see that. Oh, and he's doing he's a like loop-de-loop. -loop. Ins insanely high oh, up. Like he is wow. like thousands of feet, maybe thousands of miles if you go by my math. Um, now he's parachuting. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. So why is he parachuting? Because he... Just expend oh, all this fuel. Oh, Bryce, so you know how to land these things? Are you the expert on this oh, now? Oh, yeah. Let's no, say, no, like, no, you I'm did gonna, a VTOL I'm on and off. I'll slow down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. That's incredible. Oh. All right. So, so with that visual, let's now go to the audio transcripts from this uh, uh, LAX thing. Pilot, Tower American 1997. We just passed a guy in a jetpack. Tower. American 1997. Okay, thank you. Were they on their left side or your right side? Pilot off to the left side, maybe 300, 300 yards or so at our altitude. Meanwhile, uh, the tower then goes to a southwest flight. 
uh, Southwest uh, 6046, Southwest Pilot Tower. We just saw this guy pass by us, too. The tower then goes to a JetBlue flight, and uh, uh, they were uh, they were looking. They did not see it, but the other two independently, two uh, pilots from an American flight and a Southwest flight both saw this man in a jetpack. And this this is where again? LAX. LAX. Ooh. Wow. Odds it well, being and, and, the same guy? To LAX. I mean, and it doesn't mean they could have been 30 miles away from LAX, but that would have been the air traffic. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, oh, I thought one of them was uh, on the runway. Oh, maybe not. Maybe. I don't know. Um, but uh, that's, there was, that's wild. There was a viral video years ago, and I forget which movie it was, but it was Iron Man or something, where they took basically... They made like it wasn't actually John, but it was like an airplane that looked like a person and flew it around yeah. New York City. Oh, which wow, which so, was pretty so, cool. So, so they took like a remote controlled airplane, gussied it up to look like Iron Man, and and flew it around. Yeah, I don't know if it was Iron Man, but it was something like that, and it looked cool because you look you look far away and you're like, oh wow, this looks cool. Oh, damn, British. I think this is flying Crazy. people in New York City from 2012. <sighs> it's so dope. And so there's a drone <laughs> with a string attached. <laughs> Oh, 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 that's so great. Oh, yeah. They're... Oh, oh, it's so it's so great to get old enough where I could still remember where I would think this is the greatest idea in the world, but be yeah. old enough to be legit horrified that this kind of irresponsible stuff is being done in the flight space. Honey, honey, it's the rapture. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot less people than we thought. <laughs> 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 oh, that's amazing! <laughs> oh, is it Green Lantern or what is that? And yeah. they're so far away. Like when when you see the details on them, you can tell that they're like aerodynamic and not like full. They're basically like uh, very fancy kite tails yeah. that are that are being uh, dangled by monofilament line behind drones or whatever. Yeah. Wow. Oh, but they look. Great. Was this was this viral marketing for Chronicle? Oh, it was 2012. Yeah, um, that would have been around the right time. Yeah, Chronicle came out in 2012. Chronicle I, NYC is the name of the YouTube yeah. account. Ah, good catch. Yeah. Good I think catch. I remember. I think I remember that as part of this. Oh, that's that's wild. Uh, and no, yet great when idea, you try though. to promote great an idea. Adult Swim property, you get shut down by terrorists. As terrorists. <laughs> as terrorists. As terrorists. I mean, the police. Uh, anyway. All right. Speaking of uh, amazing heights, you too will reach amazing heights when you become a patron at patreon.com slash weird things. Make sure that this show keeps on rolling each and every Tuesday. Patreon.com slash weird things. Yeah. And, and while you're at it, uh, head on over to doghousesystems.com slash V slash rogue. They're the ones who provide all the equipment that we run on. We're still working off our debt to them and you're going to need a new computer at some point anyway. So there. Here's a, I found an article and they show, cause those were, those were RC planes with wings, like designed to look like people. Oh. So, uh, it's, yeah, they weren't drones. They weren't dangled. Those were actually the planes themselves that were doing that. Oh yeah. Um, we, okay. Yeah. You see them yeah, where see they're them? carrying them. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow. That's, that's even more impressive. Cause that's yeah. it's like kind of an oblong shape. Really clever design. Really, really clever engineering on that. Brian's like, hmm, modern road. I, I definitely am thinking, <laughs> like, you caught me exactly in state. Uh, yeah, like, for audio I, listeners, Brian literally had his finger to his mouth doing mm, that. Mm, oh. uh, right, right, right now, the latest thing I've been thinking about is what pirate radio station I want to run from the property uh, so that as people approach, uh, and like, yeah, maybe some kind of 30 minute something world of the worlds is on a loop, whether it's a fake NPR, whether it's a, you know, uh, a, a, a disaster fake thing or whatever. I, I don't know. I, yeah. How about the theme to the, the Pirates of the Caribbean soundtrack? I mean, like the actual ride, the sound from the ride. <laughs> <laughs> this Dead is the tale. <laughs> Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> Fool of Tortuga. That is such a great song. Oh, <laughs> oh my God! Does he know the Lonely Island Michael Bolton song? Oh is, God, yeah. You Michael really Bolton appreciate is a major cinephile. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. You, you appreciate his voice and and yes, his love for movies. <laughs> now it's back just, to he, the good part. <laughs> yeah, that's so good. Oh, ah, uh, so yeah. Um, jetpacks. Uh, send in. We want to know what's going on here. We're confused. Um, this is a very cool. There was an article that came out that was. It was on the Nature Magazine website, but it wasn't actually, I think, published in Nature. It was, I think, published somewhere else, but it was mentioned there. And this was some researchers have said that, again, this will be, we'll be able to watch this, then see what the reaction is and, and the follow-up, if there's anything true to this. But the idea of how solar, uh, s the sun can influence earthquakes, and the idea of, like, saying that there may be an effect where, like, when solar winds strike the Earth, it could charge tectonic plates, like, vis-a-vis, -vis, like, the, plate, the piezoelectric effect. Oh, so, so we're not even talking about, like, the general swelling and contraction of, of the daily solar cycle. We're, we're talking about, like, next level something. You get some flare-up of a solar wind that comes towards the Earth. The paper says they found a correlation between um, earthquakes and solar winds, so... Basically, I try to find the link to this article for you, Bryce. Um, but you'll probably find it for I do. So this is a new paper that's come out, and basically uh, on the correlation between solar activity and large earthquakes worldwide. And they say they've graphed solar activity and earthquakes and see a correlation. Now, the problem with this is that uh, there's a lot of earthquakes all the time, earthquakes around the world. And so trying to figure out which ones were influenced by this, which ones weren't, et cetera, this paper goes deep into details. Somebody smarter than me will be able to take it apart and look at it and curious to see what the reaction is. But it's a very interesting idea, though, that it's just that this external thing that affects it. They looked at the SOHO satellite data. Uh, that's that's insane. I mean, because everything that I've uh, that I do know about earthquakes is that there is just not a whole lot. There's certainly not a whole lot of predictive capacity to it, where if there was some other like hey by the way we might be facing some earthquake activity because of our ability to track solar winds that'd be amazing i i mean i suppose conceptually i can imagine like if you put your fingers together and you're about to snap there's some you know uh, uh musculature uh impulse that causes you to snap the rest of the way but if you're just poised there i could totally see where a shock of whether it's a thermal shock or, or I mean, in this case of solar wind shock would be enough to, to kick it off. Uh, that's something I hadn't, hadn't even considered. Uh, so, so at this point, uh, we're looking at just a, boy, that's a curious correlation, right? Yeah, they, they did. They did a first as they looked to see if there was a correlation between, you know, look at the Soho satellite, which is great observers of the sun. Look at the correlation between data coming from there and earthquakes to see if they could find. And they said, look, we found a signal where there seems to be this influence when this when the solar energy picks up, you start to get, you know, your your earthquakes or, you know, it's tied to earthquakes. Again, like I I don't I'm not not a seismologist, and I know that there's earthquakes all the time. How they're separating them from, you know, how are they differentiating them to figure out which earthquakes are which? Are they looking for certain magnitudes, whatever, or something else? But it is, and then they looked at to say, what's the mechanism? The mechanism they talked about that's been brought before is that you have, you know, your, the rocks, you know, the makeup or crust, there's water, there's whatever. They may be affected by piezoelectric effects and electrical charges. And there could be a thing where there's a charge differential there that ends up causing this. And there's some people, there's claims that like you get discharges near earthquakes where you may see like, you know, electrical discharges, et cetera. So it's it's a very speculative kind of like if this is true and if this is true, this is true. But science is about narrowing these things down by one by one and figuring out like, was well, it predictive or are you just really good at hind casting to figure out like and you know, they said, you know, we were able to look at the data forward and say, look at here. But, you know, will it be predictive one and two? Does the mechanism hold up? Can, can I ask a totally dumb question just just so we could play with it and think if it's possible? Um, is it? possible to build up a set of stations that uh, essentially pay off nothing in terms of energy until an earthquake happens uh and what would that look like uh because because an earthquake is a release of potential energy so if there's potential energy just like there is potential energy in the water stored behind a dam um has has any 
uh, is for all I know, Tesla has already had five patents on this or whatever. But but is there anything to the thought of trying to to prepare for the eventual release of the potential energy of an, of an earthquake and and use it to capture it in some way? Well, you would you would have to figure out one. I mean, we could go to let's say you know somewhere along the San Andreas Fault where there are places in the California desert, whatever, like where you know. This is the fault line. This is the region. And you know that when shifts happen, you're going to have that there. Right. To try to capture the kinetic energy from that, the problem would be you would have to think up some real exotic thing. Like, oh, like, do we know that the piezoelectric thing is a fact? Is there a really big charge differential? It'd be kind of like it, it, it'd be trying to, it'd be kind of like trying to capture lightning. You know, you could do it, but and it would be this would be more math. Lightning would be even easier than this. And even that, yeah, that is that's a good point uh, because because you're right. At least lightning happens every single day. Uh, I guess I'm thinking in terms of like some kind of giant um, cartoonish network of flywheels that uh, that that, you know, stuff happens. And then, you know, whatever the shift is, all the flywheels spin into motion. But but uh, I think as an engineering problem, you're right. It would be much easier to build something for uh, uh, lightning instead. Yeah, and somebody says it would be kind of like trying to capture energy from the change in air pressure. Yeah, we call that wind energy. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we just wait for the wind to want to move from here to here because there's a pressure differential and you capture the wind as it moves by. Uh, you know, there is there is a, and then that's a problem with like wind energy and then like ocean turbines, like trying to capture wave, you know, tidal. Like you know, if you look up some of the stuff on like, you know, tidal energy, tidal energy is huge. And the, the problem we deal with a lot there is corrosion is that you can build a thing, you can build a little floating void that sits out there and basically goes up and down and generates energy as the tides come in and they go out. Uh, a big problem is just that these things corrode so much. And when you look at your, when you try to figure out where you want to get your energy from, you got to do a spreadsheet and say, what does it cost to build this? What does it cost to maintain it? And those are real costs that often get left out of like, oh, we should all switch to this green thing. It's like, yes, in the imaginary world, where materials never wear down, photovoltaics last forever, this makes sense. Uh, but it also shows you where to direct your energies, making photovoltaics last longer, et cetera. I, I don't think I'd ever pause to imagine what a, what a tidal dam would look like, but you're right. It would be as simple as just a tether uh, with air up top, and then uh, uh, water goes up, things gets pulled, uh, 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 much like you know uh, a, a rowing machine. Uh, thing goes down, uh, but of course, our, our constant uh, villain is storage. Like we have no way to, yep. to store the energy or to get well, it yeah. anywhere. Well, yeah, Bryce, go back. You can show like there show there are actually some real ones, some real test ones and stuff that like uh, they've done. And you know, you can you can run a cable. You can have a unit, like a generator below that the cable pulls on, and then it just has a power cord that basically runs to uh, you know the shore, and you can get your energy there. Yeah, here's a uh, a tidal well. So the problem here too is that like uh, I think that they're kind of a worse solution than wind power because wind you know, we're gonna they can interfere with sort of the migratory path of birds and stuff. Here, your effect on sea life is going to be pronounced. It really is going to be pronounced, and that's I think I think that's why there's less sort of tidal energy sort of focus now too is because we it's hard to figure out what the impact's going to be. Am, am I right? Well, and and, and also, uh, you can put wind in a lot of different places. As long as there's like a big open space, you can put up wind turbines and there might be people that are upset. I don't know a lot of areas, a lot of beachfront areas that uh, are not going to be spoken for, protected and coveted by the people around them. Well, remember that, that this would be, most areas aren't beachfront though. Like most areas like aren't, and also where you'd start, you'd put it in places like a lot, a lot of places like Northern Europe, like, you know, the, the North Sea and stuff like that, they're looking at it and you wouldn't see yeah. it. Um, so, I mean, the, yeah, I mean, that is a factor is why that, but there's a lot of places where you could put it where nobody would ever notice or see it, but there is that the impact on sea life would not be yeah. insignificant. And I guess this is why uh, storage problems, notwithstanding, this is why we heard so much talk about the hydrogen economy, where it's like, once you get down to hydrogen, like fuel cells are inefficient, but once you have the hydrogen, uh, wherever it came from, it, it, it at least tends to be stable in a way the batteries or, or transmission lines are not. 
Well, hydrogen's hard. Like hydrogen's, I think hydrogen's sort of like a, a, a dead end for the most part because hydrogen's extremely difficult to contain. And where electrical power, you just put it through a cable, send it somewhere. And then if you need something like a car, then you put a battery in a car. When you start trying to figure out how to put hydrogen into a car and how to do all that, that's sort of like why, uh, like Toyota is still trying to stick to that, but you know, other you know manufacturers are sort of what can also like hydrogen is exciting when we didn't think we were going to get battery density to where it is now. Yeah. But, and, th and there might be cases for that, like, you know, uh, like long haul trucking or there might be an industrial sort of thing. Like you think of like, we, we forget, I mean, I forget, I mean, you may not, but like how often we use like natural gas for things like, you know, forklifts and factories and stuff and things like that. And so it might, I could see it displacing like for certain kinds of areas where it's efficient to have like a big, huge container truck show up and put that in there. But for a lot of, you know. Stuff. Yeah, I guess I'm trying to figure out like what autonomous something can be floating out in the ocean. Like, let's say, let's say the great Texas size trash pit or whatever. It's like, let's add more trash. It's nothing but windmills on top and, you know, uh, uh, some kind of buoy that, that charges based on. Uh, the motion of the ocean, uh, you got to turn it into something and you can't put it into a battery because the battery can't hold on to it, but you could manufacture hydrogen, but hydrogen is notoriously hard to hold on to. I don't know. You know, now, so like, yeah, you're, unless you have, like, there's some interesting sort of work on like doing kind of cool electrolysis, like improving like membranes and stuff that separate water into hydrogen, oxygen and stuff. So if you had something that was sort of like an active sort of generator of that, that was using but you're still using electricity. There's still electricity going into the cycle, which is sort of the problem where, I mean, I maybe, don't know. maybe I'm maybe, just a podcaster. <laughs> I know, I know this, look, we're all dumb. That's the, the conceit of the show, mm -hmm. but, it, but it's like, uh, man, I, like, I don't know, a Texas sized photovoltaic that does nothing but, uh, uh, but, 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 you know, create, uh, uh, uh buckets of hydrogen and oxygen. Well, I, I, I think in the answer is going to be all of the above and a lot, the more localized you can put it to, the less you lose from that. So, you know, the, I think in the future, like your house, your, the roof of your house will be completely covered in solar panels, right? You get yeah. the cost of that down to the same price as your roof. You're going to put solar panels, but it may not be hundred percent of your energy, but like here we are in California and like, you know, we're, it's, we're getting told like, Hey, it's 2020 and we're being told, Hey, you may have to, you're going to black, we're going to have a blackout because, uh, we have really dumb ideas about the dangers of nuclear energy years ago. And so we don't have power plants, but we have all the sun in the world and we've spent. Do, do, do you think there's any way we get past <laughs> our irrational fear of, of nuclear? Uh, the DNC, I think it put nuclear into their platform. I think they actually accept the, I mean, I heard that that was added to that there. And that'd been one of the biggest problems was that for years, you know, when it came from a political point of view is that you had one party that was for it and one party that was against it. And I think there's been a shift there now, which would be very helpful. That'd um, be nice. Yeah, I got to <laughs> double check on that. I mean, you know, you know, it, but that would be because it's it's, you know, we hear the horror stories and there's dumb things have been done and things aren't completely safe. But we've had a lot a lot of the examples of things between Chernobyl in Fukushima, you saw part of it was that you know, Chernobyl's, you know, the political environment which had happened in a poorly designed reactor and one where you couldn't really criticize it. And then, uh, you know, um, you know, what's happening is that uh, the, you know, the, the, the engineering going into these things is so much better. So there's a lot more testing now on compact nuclear reactors, et cetera. So well, let's hope. Plus also like, uh, I believe fourth or fifth generation reactors are able to use the waste from previous reactors as the fuel. So I, I, I don't know. I'm still, I'm very bullish on nuclear, but yeah. And, and, and it's been something that, uh, I think the first person that I remember talking about it from an environmental perspective was, was Ed Begley Jr. No he kidding. Was like, like all, oh yeah. He was very much on, on the, uh, uh, the, the, the use of, uh, that technology. Yeah. Yeah, there's been there's been a shift in I think that because you start looking at what our options are and you know I think I think it's an all of the above approach but I think that um you know the more the more we go into different areas the better like I said in the future like you know you'd have solar panels on your roof you know maybe have a, a nuclear plant you know somewhere not too far away and able to provide and switch over and then eventually one day we go to fusion yeah 
So, Maybe one day. So, yeah. Hey, do you hear that? What's that? It sounds like singing. Oh. 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 It's the sound oh. of my pick. No, no, Brian. Oh, not It's yet. not the sound of your pick. Oh. It's a dog that's singing. Like a a singing dog. dog. A singing dog. A New Guinea singing dog. But like, Andrew, they're extinct. How are we hearing the New Guinea singing dog when I know for absolutely a fact that they are extinct? Number one. Well, number gentlemen. one. Watch your number one. Watch your mouth, honky. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, turns out that apparently there is a breed of dogs known for its singing <laughs> that they thought extinct, but now they think they they uh yeah, no, we heard captivity. Them. It was the it was the first sound on on ill communication. <laughs> They went back and redid it, though, because they found out what the dog was saying was offensive. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Yeah. All right, so here we go. Uh, a, a, a singing dog here. Let's, let's hear. It sounds a lot like howling. And, uh, So, <laughs> all right, I, I don't, I don't right, know pitchfork, enough. All right, Pitchfork, come in, criticize. I don't know. I don't know the difference in the genealogies of like dogs and wolves and stuff. I assume that they that that they are they are not unrelated, but I guess I, I don't know. It, it just kind of sounds like a howling wolf. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is, Music critics, what can I say? <laughs> Andrew is just like, guys, we have one conceit on the show. We believe as hard as we can, as long as we can. Well, <laughs> well, I, 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 what, what, what I don't know is how rare it is. That's Apparently, they were possibly considered extinct, and now they found some in... Oh. Turns out they were I shy. Like Indonesia. I like that Justin was expecting the new Adele album. That's what I like. <laughs> I wasn't, no, this wasn't about the quality it's just and howling. fidelity of the music. I didn't want to be like, this isn't like, I wasn't like, oh my God, this is so terrible. Oh, I, a little pitchy, dog. I'm, I'm really upset with the quality of your tunes. That's not what I was saying. I just didn't know how rare this thing would be. I didn't know why, like, because you could tell me Justin, dogs have never howled. Like, you've never heard a howling dog before, and I'd be like, sure, fine. I don't know. I never really had dogs. I don't know. It's a so, boodle beagle boo. <laughs> here, boodle here we beagle are boo. hiking through, like, the Malaysian forest. In the middle of the night, we hear this, ooh, this ethereal howl. I'm like, Justin, yeah, that. And I'm like, I think that's a singing dog. It's a wolf. Come on, Dana. <laughs> I mean, wait, hold on. No, if we are literally trolloping through the woods and all of a sudden you heard that, you're telling me you'd be like, whoa, that's a singing dog. No, you just assume in, it was a wolf. In Malaysia? Well, I don't know where wolves live. Do they live in Malaysia? <laughs> Does, they have in Malaysia? Does Malaysia have a wolf? <laughs> He's howling in Malaysian. <laughs> all right, here we go. This will be great for all of my, uh, all of my cookies. Do... <laughs> Does Malaysia have a wolf? <laughs> Here we go. Uh, All right. List of gray wolf populations by country. We just got to search for Malaysia. <laughs> no, it doesn't look like Malaysia. <laughs> so then we know. Even, even better. We're walking through the woods. I'm like, oh, I've got a singing dog. Like, hold on. Hold my antenna. I got to get my connection to the internet so I can see here. Da, 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 Malaysian wolf. <laughs> no, wait, no, no, no. Hold on. Go to Wikipedia just wait, to check. If we knew if we knew for sure that there were no wolves in Malaysia, we heard that sound. You're telling me your first thought would be singing dog and not something even more horrifying? No, it'd be a ghost. I would, I'd be like, listen to that ethereal, beautiful, haunting sound. You would be ready with your pitchfork score to rate it. And like, Whoa, you know, yeah, no, down. I never said I was, wait, where did you, where did I'm, you go with that? I mean, 
I don't know how close they are, but I'm thinking like uh, Viet Cong. Like I've already got uh. a stick all sharpened up. I'm ready. I've seen enough TikToks of people who are like accidentally, my dog thought I left the house and it starts howling because it thinks no one's home. I've seen enough of those videos to go, oh, maybe someone left the house. Maybe someone left a window open. <laughs> Did someone, all right. Somebody left Google Malaysia. Another Google search. Does anyone in Malaysia leave the house? <laughs> all right. Now can we do picks? <laughs> yes. Fine. Do your picks. Uh, I watched a little James Cameron movie by the name of Titanic. Mm. Uh, Wait, so did you finally actually let your girls watch a girl movie for once? <laughs> uh, yes, in so far as watching 9-11 is a delightful girls movie. It's the 9-11 of 1912. It's also like it's a big Titanic. romantic movie. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, no, it was fascinating to see how quickly they were captivated. Uh, Bonnie, or Penny, uh, Bonnie and Josie and I watched the whole thing. Um, Penny kind of tapped out. She had an appointment at one hour, but then went back and watched it the following day. Um, man, uh, Red Letter Media has it right. It's the best and the worst movie of all time. Uh, and and the parts where it's the best is very, very good. It's it's at the, uh, the golden age of practical effects, right before CGI makes it too easy to, to do everything. Uh, the writing is hackneyed and direct, but uh, is kind of great for being so it holds up and low key man um i i i i need to go back and find a copy of true lies uh and and find a copy of the abyss because neither of them you can get anywhere right now uh but but low key he's might be just straight up the most feminist film director in my lifetime it's 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 really remarkable uh yeah i mean look it was it was uh, generationally defining for uh, uh, people that grew up when I grew up. Like it was the first time that I ever remember anything close to how people described Star Wars when it came out in the 70s and people just like going to the movies over and over and over and over and over again. That's what Titanic was for girls my age. Like I... I it was just an immediate uh uh you know flood it was it was iconic an iconic film yeah i think that one of the things i loved about that was it gets forgotten but it's fresh in your mind is how wonderfully cameron did the framing devices in that he had it doesn't just start with, you know, Jack and the boat. It starts modern day with Bill Paxton and the whole story of the crew, you know, with the submarine, the submersible, trying to get the story. And those bookends and interstitials in the way the story is told is really brilliant. It's it's a sign of like how you know, like you know, Cameron Cameron writes a movie so it can play in Manhattan and Manila. He writes a movie so it will play around the world and doesn't have just one audience. He has that global audience, but some of the things he did there. So if you're a dude and you're watching the kind of the cool action-y sort of stuff, you know, on board the modern day stuff, and it goes back, you're like, okay, this is cool. You know, not just a romance. Uh, he also obe obeys the um, kind of the, the YouTube formula where it's like, uh, okay, you got five minutes, give me something, and it better be good. And the yeah. first five minutes, he gives you the entire movie uh, from from a, a thousand foot tactical, why you should care about it, what's interesting about it, why it's unique. There's a MacGuffin happening. And then, you know, this old lady shows up, whatever. But then uh, you, you got this curious uh, skullduggery, you know, uh, 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 grave robbers that are, that are there. And then and then it seduces you into actually caring about the characters and understanding, oh, wait, there's layers to social strata and all that stuff. And that happens to and then like a thunderbolt, you're reminded, oh, wait, no, 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 this is 9-11, the movie. It, it's crazy. It's interesting, too, is that before Titanic came out, I remember reading an article in Wired magazine where Cameron, they, talk, they interviewed Cameron when he's in the editing room trying to put this thing together and it had been called Cameron's Folly. Because you know they shot the oh, same yeah. large parts, of, yeah, in Mexico, massive sets, one third scale replica of the Titanic, etc. All of this, and on his editing bay, he had a razor blade taped to 
the shelf and it said use in case movie sucks <laughs> and people were predicting that this was going to be a flop they were already you know the new water you know ishtar which had been a notorious flop before that it was all of that negative sort of reaction and then spoiler alert yeah <laughs> just huge. iconic biggest yeah, movie uh, of all time highest, yeah yeah, yeah. highest grossing movie and that was a funny when Avatar came out. You know, I remember like Justin and I were like talking, oh, well, well is it, it going to do Titanic, buddy? We're like, no, no. I'm nah. like, no, it's not going to it's like, it's like do Titanic, buddy. I mean, then, oh, no. part, part of my pitch for the kids was, uh, to put it in perspective, to shoot Titanic, he's the kind of guy that said, oh, yeah, we better go out and find the Titanic. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, that's how insane James Cameron is and, and, and how worthy of watching. Did you know you made the, the 9-11 reference? I think somebody told me this, that Cameron was actually in a submersible, like, over the Titanic when that happened. No kidding. I think that was, he was Oof. actually. That would make sense. That would make sense because that was when he was in his documentary phase yeah. where he was just making underwater documentaries with the names of the movies that he has made. Yeah. So uh, he's, I'm, I, oh, uh, the thing too is think about is it like with the new Avatar movies, you know, we don't have any new Star Wars films on the horizon, but we do have Avatar coming. Yeah, anywhere between and, two and five avatars at some point before the heat death of the universe. I'll, I'll tell you what else, man. Look, uh, we can all roll our eyes at some of the script writing that he does, but he doesn't waste any time. He keeps it simple and, and pulls at the right strings at the right time. Um, I know right now uh, Avatar is kind of an eye roller of of a uh, intellectual property for most of us, but but I think I think Avatar Fever is going to be caught whether we want it or not. I yeah I I I think you would be an idiot to bet against James Cameron. Yeah, I think we can so all I, we can all wait until that guy actually takes an L before we start you know predicting that he's going to. I worked with uh, one of the divers. I worked with uh, scuba divers. She had just come off the set of working on one of the because like they're shooting the multiple sequels, working on that, and because they were doing things like training their dive, all of the actors were doing like free dives, learning how to do breath holds and do this sort of stuff, and the scope and scale of just like what it was, like like hundreds of people underwater at a time doing stuff, and they've kept they've kept a pretty good lid on the production as far as what's gone on there, but they've now started putting out some shots. They show some stuff like underwater like robot crab like vehicles and things and like what i've heard from just you know you know getting all these top scuba instructors and divers from around the world to go be part of underwater sequences and stuff like i don't i can't even imagine what the scale that's gonna be like i was always like yeah tar's okay but like, i enjoyed it but like yeah but then i'm like ah, the more i hear about this and now that disney needs another sci-fi property and now they've got avatar yeah you know. we will see uh hey i got a pick it uh i think it's very competently done it's got a cast that i think is uh growing on me in fact i would say that the female lead is somebody that i think fits very very well almost naturally in a hyper realistic magical version of chicago and uh that uh, was uh, no surprise when I looked up uh, who she was and she was Jesse Smollett's sister. And that is Lovecraft Country. Uh, I, uh, I've i watched, I guess, the, the four episodes that they have. You know, it's it's an interesting vibe because I think the show itself is a little bit more pulpy and lightweight than you might expect. And yet some of the subject matter and the villains are obviously drawing on real world, very serious real world stuff. But, uh, you know, the episode that that just aired, which they, they have been very, very good about alternating episode by episode, the kind of movie they're telling. You know, there is the cabin in the woods kind of story. And then there's the cultist story. Then there's the uh, uh, haunted house story. And, and this one that just aired was far more action adventure -y. uh you know we'll, we'll we'll see where they go but uh so far i am enjoying it lovecraft country yeah this week was uh this week was definitely a uh national tre the, the words national treasure came to my mind many many oh, times i mean it was out and out 
you know, national treasure in Indiana Jones, uh, you know, and I think that's there. There's some of it as we get more and more into the mythology that you're like, is this Harry Potter where all the classes are African American studies? <laughs> like, because there's there's a little bit of that, but then again, I don't know if I hate that. I think I I actually kind of uh, I, I wouldn't I, I I don't I don't mind I don't mind it. It is jarring though when they go from like like there are moments that are like okay, this is a horror show that kind of has a little bit of a sense of humor to itself, but also we are talking about very real, very dark elements of America's past and. You know, uh, so far it is it is an interesting uh, uh, stew that I am enjoying, but it certainly is uh, it, it certainly bounces all over the place. And I do like the cast. I think the cast is very cast good. is think, amazing. Yeah. I'm in fact, um, uh, there's a character that you lose from the cast who I hope comes back as a force ghost or something uh, because he was quite good. Yeah, uh, I've got a pick. I uh, I. Uh, rediscovered this, I guess, uh, over over the weekend, and um, now I'm I'm uh, going to be playing this for a little while on the Twitch stream that I do on Friday nights, uh, and that is the 2016 uh, video game Hitman. Oh wow! They uh, they rebooted Hitman back in 2016 uh, with uh, a, a sort of different sort of design. So um, this only has five levels in Hitman, but there are these huge layered levels. So, you know, one the the first one is like in this mansion and you have to take down this this powerful couple and one of them is running this fashion show and the other one is upstairs running this illegal information or this big uh, uh, information auction. And so you have to find your way in and, and uh, take them out. And I think what's really interesting is that like you could just like, you could, they have like pre-scripted stuff in the game so like oh you know this one guy he uh really wants this certain cocktail so you just find the recipe and you put poison inside of it and then bam you did it hooray um but what's really interesting is they've they're so intricate of levels that um not only are there like tons of different ways to uh, accomplish your goals with those story things but they have like um escalation contracts so they say hey Find this NPC, like they name an NPC and you see them on the map. Find this person and get rid of them. And then you do the, so will you do that? Okay, that's pretty easy. The next time you do it, okay, well now there are more security cameras or you're not allowed to vault over anything or jump off of anything. Uh, oh, now you have to use the special disguise. You have to use a specific weapon. And um, I think it's a sign of like how really um, well made and well, well thought out this game is because you can like play it very action-y if you wanted to. Um, but I, and I like puzzle games, but it's very puzzle like in, uh, in its way of give, presenting you these challenges and saying, well, how would, how, sh how could I do that? Like, yeah, I could go around and get all these different disguises, but how would I actually solve this if I couldn't change my disguise? I mean, it's, uh, it's edge of tomorrow, the video game, right? Where it's sure. just like you, you, your job is to listen and pay attention and know the entire story and figure out the slightest nudge that will result in the target being killed. Yeah. Um, and then uh, 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 our friend Jeff from the, the Rage Like podcast, he loves the Hitman series. And uh, uh, he, he always talks about like, how great the story is. And it's so weird because I think most people don't get the story out of Hitman because you play because a lot of people will just play the level and then move on to the next one. But they hide. They even hide the story bits in playing the game multiple times so oh well you need to hear this dot this conversation between these people and then you need to hear this conversation between these people before you're like oh i actually get a sense of who these characters are and what they did and what um their motivations are um and so i i think it's really cool i'm, I'm playing it on friday night bryce here on the twitch channel um and going through trying to get all of those challenges because that it, it truly is like a lot of fun to just have a list of like okay now do a chandelier kill now do you know, an explosives kill. Oh, and get the I, I suppose some of some of the challenges, just by the nature of their names, you're like, what? How could you? Po well, maybe if I, you know, like, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, you you start to think through that kind of stuff. They're pretty good about making most of that stuff pretty upfront. You know, like, hey, uh, in one run, get both of them with the piano wire, or uh, you know, do, figure out a way to push this one person onto the other person. Um, uh, they they. It, 
they don't thankfully they don't hide what you have that what you need to do but figuring out how to do it is is a lot of the fun um and uh uh the other fun thing about it is that uh, they made a sequel two years ago, uh, Hitman 2, uh, and um, they actually reported all of the episodes from Hitman 1 into Hitman 2. So that's how I'm playing it, as I bought them all on the PlayStation. Oh, cool. And so you can all just launch it from Hitman 2. And so they've got Hitman 3 coming out uh, in January, I think, and they're going to do the same thing again, and they're going to like keep your progression stuff. So that's kind of why I restarted it, is that um, I'm not played too much of it and now all this stuff is going to carry forward into the new consoles and uh it's really smart i think there are not any other games doing this at this level of kind of treating it as a platform um so yeah hitman. smart I, idea i i played hitman go on the iphone for like hours oh, yeah. on hours it was just just simplified and they did a lyric crowd like tomb raider which was a, you know a simplified version of that with you know the tile based sort of approach that was fun you know yeah you know i Okay, my pick is a geeky kind of pick, but I spent the weekend going back and doing some tutorials and stuff because I wanted to learn how to do a, a new framework called PyTorch, which is for like machine learning and stuff using Python. One of the things that struck me is that the tools keep getting better for learning how to do stuff. And there was a thing called a Jupyter, J-U-P-Y-T-E-R, which is a notebook if you ever do any kind of programming, you know, either you kind of go into an interface and you write a big file that's like a text file, whatever, and you say, this is my program. A notebook allows you to sort of do, and it's it's kind of a form of a REPL, but we don't need to get into what that is. It allows you to say, hey, write some, just write like plain English. Here's a block. This is going to do this. Then you put a little code block, and then you can run that code block, and then you can explain it, and then you can write another code block and run that block within it. So it's a notebook that allows you to run code within kind of a, it's like a document where you could run things. So if you wanted to build, let's say, an image classifier, you could type in there like, oh, go to Bing and grab, you know, 100 photos of Captain Kirk and grab 100 photos of Captain Picard, put them into folders. And then you go in the next thing like this is how we're going to tell the difference, et cetera. And you could build a, a document that's actually able to do computations and kind of cool stuff. And the point it's going to get to is that. When I first started learning this stuff, you had to install it on your own computer. You had to figure out how to install the different drivers and all that other stuff, which was a pain because you'd find out like, oh, this conflicts with this and this doesn't work and this doesn't do that. Now we've entered this age of they have online notebooks and Google has one called there's Binder and there's Google has Colab, which is there's a free version of that where it's this notebook and you can go in there and say, I'm going to do Python and do Python programming in there and go run it. And it's they have a version that's completely free. And it's a much easier way to learn stuff because sometimes we want to go learn how to code or do things like this. They're like, okay, step one, block aside two hours because we're going to have to install some stuff on your computer. I'm like, oh, no, this conflicts with your driver. Now you got to reinstall your, you know, whatever. And that gets very, very frustrating. So you can do a lot more code development, a lot more stuff online using things like Colab. And there's other companies that have different versions of that. And the advantage is, too, if your computer is slow, it's from years ago, it doesn't matter because it uses an online server. And there are some companies where you can say, oh, I want to plug this into a big cluster or whatever, and I want to use a lot more computing power. And it is, I love it because it's democratizing. You could be sitting there with a very old computer system. You can use one of these online notebooks and using an online computer to power it. And there's just so much cool kind of stuff out there that makes it a lot easier to learn these things. So I highly recommend checking out Udemy, YouTube, other sorts of courses, because the barrier of entry just got a lot lower. Nice. Nice. That's awesome. Gentlemen, it's been weird. Hey. Uh, yeah, in the chat room, GitHub will show you the notebook, but yeah, it will not run it. But you can go into one of these things like GoLab and just put the URL from GitHub, and it will run the notebook right in GoLab. Oh, that's cool. All right, we're going to take a couple minutes here and come back with After Things. Lovely. ARC run. Yeah, go for it. Indeed. Uh, so, a uh, programming note, everybody. Uh, I meant to say this at the start of the stream, but we'll get in now. Uh, no cord killers today, but uh, because it's Labor Day, but. Um, I will be doing a marble stream at Court Killers time. So if you've Hell never yeah. if you've never seen marbles, if you got the day off and you want to play marbles, it's free. You don't gotta download some anything. Marbs, get yeah. some marbs in your life. It's great. We play we play a lot. Of, we do a lot of races, and then uh, we listen to '90s jock jams. So 
Yes. Check it out. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. So you had a good weekend? I did have a good weekend. Um, I was doing, I was playing some of that Hitman, which was a lot of fun. It was, it, you know, I played that on the stream and then I um, was, because we don't have, we, we kind of ended those Modern Rogue shoots for now. Yeah. Um, I could just like kind of chill and like play because I I <laughs> I don't end up finding a lot of time to play game games off of off of stream. You know when I'm when yeah. I'm out streaming stuff. Um, so it was it was kind of nice to just like sit down and you just know, veg out and just yeah. just go dumb. Yeah. Play some Hitman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that's sweet. That's awesome. Uh, uh, excited for Raise the Dead season two. That's gonna be great. I still need. I, am. I still need to. to I mean, you can listen to it. I mean, I like know. it's there. You know, <laughs> ready to go. You know, I mean, any moment and I now. And it's I already <laughs> changed a lot, Bryce. I should actually send you the new version so you can listen to where <laughs> please, they are now. Please do. Um. Uh, no, honestly, yeah. it's like it's one of those things where. Um. You know, you can't take it personally when I'm asking for three hours of my friends' lives. Like, uh it's it certainly is um like any kind of artistic process you're 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 wondering how what you how your creation is heard by ears you know outside of uh your own uh, existence but i you know this is not here listen to my two minute song do you think it's good like you know or even like an album this is literally multiple uh, hours uh, yeah multiple hours of stuff and uh, about subject matter that people might not care about. I mean, who knows if, if any, if half the people that I send these things to, uh, like, would ever listen to a presidential history podcast, let, if, if it weren't for the fact that their friend uh, was the one doing it. So I, um, you know, as much as I like to give you a hard time for the uh, sake of the, for the sake of the stream, it is something that I am very, very, very well aware um, is, uh, uh, it, 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 it's a lot to ask and but I more wanna, specifically it's yeah I, I, I do want to crack into some of it all right like because uh, you're right like uh, the his, historical podcasts are, are not always are not always my thing so I'm not super versed in them just to begin with yeah um, but I do want at least you know listen to an episode or two and, and offer offer any notes that I can sure yeah yeah and um, you know the uh, the process of kind of putting all the finishing touches of like the next week ons and the things we missed in the episode. Cause that's the one thing I didn't want to put the things we missed in the episode in immediately because I didn't know if there were going to be like clearing holes in where this people felt the story was that I was like, okay, well let me, this thing that I didn't have in, let me add that in or something like that. Yeah. Uh, but put those in over the weekend and, um, you know, now it's just going to be a matter of getting the website ready, getting uh, the the episodes themselves locked, mm -hmm. because I then have to list Make the script. Do the well, e I got Yeah, I got to do the transcripts, and then that goes into an ebook, and then once it's an ebook, it can go into ACX. And thankfully, I figured out. You know, I'm going to send it to the same guy that I uh, Sigler's audiobook editor, just because. Uh, ACX is very fussy about exactly uh, certain, uh, according to him, kind of like archaic things that they are uh, demanding you do because they compress it so much. Mm -hmm. um, and they want to maintain, I, which I understand, they want to maintain a certain level of audio quality standard because they don't want stuff that goes in there. And the next thing you know, people feel ripped off. So the hope is to have that uh ready to roll when we launch it in october which uh you know is already pff, barreling down on us a lot faster than uh i probably would have thought so if you want to give me notes bryce then do it in the next like 48 hours okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, andrew i think you are muted <laughs> i love you bryce um if i went back in time 20 years and and i, I again you know, the billionth discussion of man, how weird is 2020? I was thinking, like, if I went back 20 years ago and I'm like, hey, I'm a man from the future, I have a script about the year 2020. Donald yeah. Trump is up for re election. 
and, I know. and then you start going through all the crazy stuff and you know like oh yeah, we you stole this from the pandemic. simpsons yeah i feel like like everything that's like there's a global pandemic and this i was saying like you know all the other sort of crazy weird bill cosby's in jail you know because it turned out that he's you know <laughs> like <rape laughs> women and stuff We're like all right get out get out weirdo <laughs> like no really really uh all right uh justin did you need to get apple's the number one things? company in the world yeah i am apple, I am good apple to past go. two trillion wow yeah no. I see that. um all right do we uh do we know what we're gonna do for for after things here yes cool uh and... you're seeing your own bubble okay oh, wow, nice. right on uh and just a reminder we should uh try to wrap up about at the half hour um if we can help it well, if you stop telling us to, Bryce, we'll be able to. Okay, well then oh, let me catch you and start oh. the show here in three, two. Hello and welcome to the After Things podcast. I'm Andrew Maine, joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello, beautiful people. Mr. Justin Robert Young. Hey, it's me. And Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hi, everybody. That's me. Gentlemen, I want to talk about piercing bubbles, our own bubbles. Go okay. on. Mm-hmm. What I'm would, not talking why would about. one want to do that? I live in a very, I worked very hard to <laughs> build this bubble all around me. And, and because I experienced nothing outside of it, I know I'm, I am right. <laughs> well, you are. And I'm not talking about political bubbles. Like, I, I think about, think about other kinds of bubbles, other bubbles. I'm going to give you an example of one. And Brian, I, I look at you and I see this bubble around you. Thank I you. see this bubble that you are this thick, thick, I'm knocking on this bubble. You can't hear it because you've got a big bubble. Think, like, Justin, maybe you have this one too. I had this, then I pierced this bubble. What's that? Bryce, I have no idea. <laughs> um, okay. So think about the information you consume. Okay. Okay. Think about the stuff. Think about the long form information you consume. Okay. What 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 does it all have in common? I mean, it's all algorithmically generated, and it tends to be habitual. Uh, I tr- my best efforts to pierce the bubble boil down to a lap of three. I look at Axios, I look at Google News, and I look at Reddit. Although recently, I'm talking. Oh, go ahead. I'm, saying, I'm talking long form, though. Long form. So you're talking about books. Could like, be. like not magazine articles, books. Is, when you yeah. say long form, is that what you mean? Yeah, okay. Yeah, could be. Yeah. I mean, uh, well, well I mean, there's famously that, one thing that ties the two of them together, which is Yeah, Amazon. The audiobooks. Well, yeah, well, and both are owned by Amazon. Yeah, Amazon well, runs the the listing for the largest bookstore in the world, and it also owns the audio, the largest audiobook uh, uh so, clearinghouse. So I guess that's what I'm trying to say. When is the last time <gasps> piercing the bubble? Did you When's the last time you read a thing? That wasn't an audiobook. A book that wasn't an audiobook. Uh, I I have had to for Raise the Dead. So I have yeah. I have read stuff that is not in audiobook for more than I ever have in the ten years previous. I will tell you that. And it is never not annoying. And we're we're not talking we're not counting like uh, articles or or ephemera or whatever. Like, Brian, like when was the book last book? book you read that wasn't an audiobook? <sighs> The Bible. Watership down. <laughs> Was this middle school? No, 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 no. Oh, I, yeah. I, 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 like maybe, maybe 15 years ago. That might have been the last book book. So I thought about this because I started wanting to do some research into some other areas and I couldn't find some of the stuff just was not an audible. And there was a lot of times. I'd, tell me and again. Tell me if this sounds familiar. Oh, this sounds really cool. Let me go to Amazon. Oh, not Audible. Never mind. Let me go find something else. Does not else. exist. Yeah. Oh my and, god. And- it, it it is never like when I begin Raise the Dead research. It's always like, all right, cool. Let me load up the audiobooks and guess like the audiobooks will always go first. And then I just like I just look at the peas that I'm shifting off to the side of my plate when all these physical books show up or I have them on on the Kindle or whatever. And I'm like. I guess we'll get to 
making of the president 1964. You know, you, you know what? Uh, in, in all fairness, uh, the last books that I've read have all been like, as Justin said, uh, tools of last resort where where it's like, eh, we got to do a scam school or a scam nation episode. I have to read these books that are at least 80 years old, where I know for a fact everyone who wrote any part of it is dead and 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 I'm going to literally just scribble notes all over them and circle and figure out how to replace a cummerbund with a napkin to to make this work. Like like it's all it's all functional dead history that I'm trying to make alive again. Yeah, and I think I mean we've all have examples of when we're forced outside of that, but our natural tendency is I, and that's been me. And I'm really speaking about myself here. And so I made a decision which was Okay, what I need to do is there are things that I want to read, things that I want to consume, and they're not in audible form. And my, I bought, I've been buying some more books and stuff, but I don't know if I've sat down. I, I read like 1984 in book form and some other ones, but like I finally decided, you know what? Like there's a lot of stuff on Kindle, a lot of things on the Kindle. So maybe I should just go ahead and, you know, uh, and I've had different Kindle devices. I had like one of the first Kindle Oasis, but it was smaller. And I'm like, ah, I want to read something that's got kind of a larger screen. So I went and uh, see if I can pop this out of the case without breaking it here. I decided to go ahead and go get a uh, the Kindle Oasis. Nice. Uh, which is a much larger screen and it's pricier. You know, it's like it's like 200 some bucks. But OMG for reading. You look at it, you're like, oh, that's great, but it just fits in your palm. You've got that right button here. It's just to like to click to go ahead is just, uh, you know, super, super easy to go, go do that. So it is one of these things as far as being able to sit there. And I found that I very easy to sit down and relax and just click this thing through. Um, and just click through and go boom, boom, boom. So I can show you this, the action on that. But how do you, uh, I, I, I think. This is probably a universal question. How do you find time to, I mean, I guess you just decide that you have time and, and do it, but um, there's, what? for somebody like me where there's an awful lot going on in the world and there's never not somebody tugging at some way, um, if I am going to self-select, like this is my screw off time, leave me alone, Oh, could, could convince me why I should, I should spend it reading. Why you should read? Yeah, right. I, I can't. Okay, that's after hey. things, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, I, 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 I would say that for me, like I wanted, there was a lot of stuff I was interested in, and I wanted to open access other information because I didn't just want to be limiting my bubble to everything that was on audible because there's a lot, a lot of older content stuff, you know, there's stuff that just maybe it's made its way into Kindle, but some of it even hasn't been made it there. But even the, the stuff, the Kindle titles is greater than the audio, like the number of stuff, the percentage of books that are made into audio books, you know, it's a percent, you know, right. it's, it's, it's like 1%, you know? And so I, I made that effort because of, you know, where I needed to go to increase my knowledge level, but also like, I haven't watched Lovecraft Country. I haven't watched. I just watched. I'm not caught up on Star Trek Lower Decks. Uh, I haven't watched The Boys season two. I haven't watched a ton of stuff. And I, I just sort of made this choice of like, let me let me go read and do these other things, you know, that I kind of want to do. Those things will be for me later. And. I don't do a podcast where I got to kind of talk about those shows either. So, you know, well, yeah, I mean, that that does alter things. But but also, but on, I also on, didn't on the create flip a side, podcast where I had an excuse to talk about those things. And and on the flip side, it's like um, it's it's hard for me to want to complain about all the stuff I have to consume when I'm like, as you rightly put, I'm the one to painted myself in, into this corner. So, uh, I mean, I, I do think that scheduling is something that helps. Like I have found far more productivity in my life the more that I have a rigid schedule and the more that I would say specifically for me and you, Brian, uh, the more I defined the time beyond the podcast schedule. Because I think that there's a very seductive concept where we can trick ourselves into thinking that we're very busy because there are these like 
areas in in the day that are rock solid and everything else is kind of floating period and that's not untrue we're we're doing a lot of stuff that uh, uh needs to get done at a certain time but the more i try to subdivide that not make it just the catch all time that i was very specific about okay well i for this hour i'm doing this for this hour i'm doing this for this hour i'm doing this the more i was able to find uh you know, more ropes to swing on. And if that, you know, if, if, if a priority there, which it was for a you know period of time over the last several months was reading books, then that was just a place where I was going to read some books. Yeah. I'll tell you so, 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 okay. So if, if the task is for each of us to identify what bubble we've trapped ourselves in and figure out a way to uh, pierce it, um, I'm just now coming out of a very intense six week schedule of production, right? Uh, uh, it's very easy for me to blow off everything and just say, well, I'm in a bubble right now. Sorry. Uh, sorry, everything, every challenge, every world, every bill, every whatever, uh, uh, you picked the wrong time. Um, now that that production crunch is over, <sighs> It is sort here's, of an here, open menu of, of where to go next. Here's my prescription. Do you have a Kindle? Do you have like a Kindle Paperwhite or one of those? Uh, well, one of the kids does. I can, I can steal it. Yeah, like get one of those and put it in the toilet. Like flush it? Yep. Flush Start, it all the way down. It's, it's, yeah. it's evil. It's, it's trash. Evil. It's poop. Yeah, it yeah. goes in the toilet where poop goes. <laughs> Yeah, but keep one like that's one of the easiest that's I said I need to force myself to read more books. So I put like I'd put like a lightweight novel like Animal Farm in one in the bathroom, right? And then I wouldn't bring my phone to the bathroom. I'm like, what am I gonna do now? Sitting in here like a caged creature with nothing oh book, okay. Do, 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 do. And and I found that like putting myself in a room with a Kindle instead of my phone, reading more. Yeah, Bonnie uh, will pick up uh, at grocery stores those uh, National Geographic sort of one one theme subject ones. Uh, like recently, the most recent one was about sleep, and before that, it was about the war on science or whatever. And it's like uh, I, I think I think maybe maybe the the real takeaway is try going to the bathroom without your phone, and yeah. uh, and just make sure that there's something there besides a shampoo bottle for you to read. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I found that, and I I was like I was so on the fence with this getting at the Oasis because I'm like, ah, I do I did. I'll tell you the advantage of this thing is, it's lighter weight than a book. It's so easy to sit there and you just press a button and it goes to the next page. Press a button, go to the next page. I find myself sitting there for an hour reading now, and I was I, like, I, ah, I don't have to pick anything. You know, I think I might actually do that because I do like the Kindle that I have, but boy, is it a frustrating experience uh to turn the page or then like swipe to turn the page and mm -hmm. i i i just you describing this makes me kind of realize like oh yeah that action even if it's not the worst thing in the world if it if it doesn't work once out of every 10 times for the amount of times that that action is repeated like it will sap part of your energy to keep reading like, like that will be just a low grade element of annoyance that if you're not used to doing it, it will, you know, prevent you from fully committing to the experience. Yeah, I wish they put that button on all the other Kindles because it, it, it really was, it made a big, and I had, they sent me one of the, the first Oasis's, uh, but it was, the screen size was smaller. And that's one of the things I like yeah. about the Oasis is the screen size. I would love for it to be even bigger because some of the stuff I look at has graphs and stuff, but that difference in screen size, you know, makes a big difference. And that, yeah. the, those buttons, the forward and the backwards buttons, also what it does too, Brian, it will sync up with your audio book if it, you have the audio version. And as soon as you go play your audio book, it'll pick up where you left off. Yeah, I, I, I know that's a feature that appeals to some folks, but it's like, uh, like, like I either... Uh, I either want my Coke or Pepsi. I, I, I yeah. don't want a blend of the two. Well, like I, I've used it for, and I know I do hear you, but I, I've used it for because like I picked up a book that's on uh, 
calculus, right? Because it's, you know, a neat book about the history of calculus. And sometimes they have photos. And when I'm in the audio book, I just pick it up and there's the photo, you know, that goes with it. And that's great when, you know, I have an audio book that has companion. But I, I can't, you know, we'll see how I feel a few months from now. But like, I flirted with ebooks for a while. I make my living off of ebooks. Like, you know, I, I make my living off of people pressing buttons to go read things. And I've decided that it's a step towards, you know, if I can't find it on Audible, then I'll go to Kindle. And if I have to, I'll get a book. Um, do, uh, do you find yourself seduced by podcasts that, that draw you away from Audible? Because, like, like I feel like Audible is like, eh, I really ought to read that next book. But, oh, it's Monday. There's a new Reason Roundtable. Why don't I just do that? Like, I don't like, listen to any podcasts. Hmm. That's one way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I used to, and then, uh, you know, you either you either find kind of like, oh, I love these personalities, you know, like us, and it's charming. I want to be around and be part of this community. Or, I don't know, a lot of things I found at the topics I was interested in, I wasn't getting as much out of it. And, and I probably need to sort of extend maybe. And I, I would do, I would always sort of like, oh, I'll go listen to this episode. This was good. And I might spend, a, I might discover a podcast that has an interesting topic, but then I might listen to 10 out of 30 episodes with, oh, this guest is interesting. This is this, but I'm not going to go listen to everything else. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough because I find myself like, uh, I wanting to stay plugged in, uh, per, per one third of my job. Uh, <laughs> and I know that the shortcut is to just listen to Justin. Uh, but, but. I feel like that's such an easy cheat code that I don't want to do it. And so I cast about and try to listen to stuff in the periphery that I think will give me the opportunity to have interesting discussions with Justin on the subject, uh, like we're about to have on happy hour coming up shortly. Yeah. I, I find myself kind of wanting to do deep dives into stuff. So, yeah, you know, as, and like, you know, like, oh, I'm like, you know, for various reasons, you know, machine learning and, you know, deep learning and stuff like this. And I want to do a dive into it. And it's also like, ah, I need to get improve my calculus. I need to go back and kind of understand more of these fundamentals. And so I won't be like staring into space confused when something happens there. So I tend to pick a very narrow thing and just go deep into it for a while. The, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, there's a very good, uh, the grand courses, uh, one on calculus, uh, by Dr. Michael's Michael Starbird, who was my, uh, professor at UT. Uh, but oh, wow. basically he, uh, 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 you know, once you fundamentally understand that, that there, uh, what derivations are nothing but the ability to figure out what angle uh, you are on a curve at any given time and that all of calculus is just the ability to measure the area under a curve. Like everything suddenly feels very, very simple. And to hear the stories of the competing versions of, al of calculus and so on, uh, I, I believe it's called a uh, uh, calculus made clear. Is that right? I'll look that up. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Michael Starbird. He's a, he's, he's, he's a, a hoot. Yeah. I think that's, yeah, that's one of these things where, you know, once you sort of get through through the doorway of going, oh, okay, I get, I, you know, one, you get the idea of what you're trying to measure, like, oh, it's not just the, the car doesn't go one speed, it accelerates, it decelerates. How do you map that out? And how do you measure the change? And then how this applies to everything, that's helpful. It's helpful. And, but then it's, you know, when you start getting into, you know, how do you break all these more complex problems down? Because that's sort of the beauty of calculus is the idea that, like, Ah, it's everything's really a bunch of simple, a lot of little simple problems. And you can, the art of it is the beautiful thing of like, how do you break this down into those simple problems? You know, and that's, you know, that's the fun thing. And so the book I'm reading right now um, goes into that too and talks about like this. It, it uses the, uh, the, the example of the guy that wrote uh, uh, Walk, the guy that wrote uh, War and Remembrance and whatnot when he was interviewing Richard Feynman. This is Infinite Powers. When he was interviewing Richard Feynman about the Manhattan Project and whatnot, and they're going out to the parking lot, and Feynman goes, oh, you do know calculus, right? And uh, you're like, uh, no. He's like, well, that's the language God speaks. You know, and Feynman hops into his car and drives away. And he's yeah. like, huh? And then the guy, you know, spent a lifetime trying to learn calculus, like he'd hire a tutor or whatever, but never fully grasped it because he couldn't find that basic, what's that easy entry into it? And 
So this guy wrote this book to sort of say, well, this would be the book that I would recommend you read to get a starting point because, man, math is learning math sucks because the people who teach math were the people that were naturally good at it. And it's like learning, you know, juggling from somebody who's just an innate juggler or innate, just good at a thing, you know, like, like gymnast, yeah. you know. I don't get it, man. You just do this, do it like I'm doing. Yeah. 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 They're I'm all five up foot in the two. Air. I'm five foot two, 110 pounds, solid body mass. Just do what I do. <laughs> Like, yeah, uh, as he flips and somersaults, like, hmm. So, so that's great. Though. I took a recommendation. So anyhow, that's just my my thought is like I'm looking for ways to sort of break through sort of my bubble, not just the opinions, but the kind of information I consume. And, and this is one of the things that why there is a fierce debate over copyright and the idea that like you know extend do as extending copyrights prevent things from being saved or encourage certain things to be saved back and forth. And, you know, what are we losing? You know, what, what happens when, you know, over time as we more digitize stuff, what about all the stuff on the fringes? Yeah, man. Don't know. So, yeah. I think, uh, yeah. I mean, it's worthwhile to, to look for it though. It's worth, I mean, even, even the idea, I, I, I think, for for you, Brian, now, as you come out of this all hands on deck, all the emotional and physical um, uh, power should be redirected to that crunch you just had. Uh, I, I've I have found that like immediately jumping into a more speculative or uh, uh, maybe silly or like, ah, I, I'll, I'll get to it when I get to it kind of project, um, is really, really helpful just because number one, the stakes are a little lower, but your work ethic is still really high. And either you can kind of use that like recalibration of, of effort and pressure to be like, oh, well, let me just power through this a little bit. And then maybe, I like what I get at the end of it. Maybe I don't, maybe this is the time for research. And so now I am finding all these other things that maybe I wouldn't do because now I want to, I want to do this thing. You know, I want to, I just want to create a thing that isn't what I normally create. Uh, that doesn't have the pressure that I put on other stuff. Like I've, I found that to be very helpful. Why am I honored? I mean, that's just getting a dog, right? You know, but, but uh, I think, yeah. Dude, <laughs> just, just getting a dog. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, the answer is yes. Like, like that, that's exactly yeah. what, what I am trying to channel my energy into. Uh, and yeah. I'm excited about it. Yeah. Uh, you guys got any other picks? I got a pick. I it's kind of an anti pick. It's more, I guess it's a, a little bit of a thought. Obviously my head is very much in the, the true story documentary kind of way. And when I was first thinking about how to do raise the dead, I would listen to hardcore history or um, you must remember this or cocaine and rhinestones, all podcasts that I've talked about have been tremendous influences. Um, and I wound up settling on that way of doing things as opposed to another show that I very much love, uh, the, the team that used to do Slow Burn and now does Fiasco for Luminary. And part of the reason why was because Fiasco and, and Slow Burn are both very uh, interview-specific documentaries. They are talking to the people that were in the rooms and they are making it happen. The problem, or rather... The, the, the issue that I think sometimes when those shows are not done as well is you are handcuffed to the people that you spent all the time interviewing. And so Fiasco and Slow Burn have done a great job in doing it, of identifying the people that you want to hear. Not so great of a job is a documentary we started on Netflix last night called Fear City, uh, which is all about taking down the mob in 19 late 1970s early 1980s new york and man am i excited about that time period am i excited about that subject matter but holy crap is there just a lot of talking not a lot of what you would want in terms of living in that world there's not a lot of like you know stories about the mob or 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 how the feckless the law enforcement was uh, you wind up spending about 15 minutes 
in Cornell because they got the Cornell professor that had written the RICO laws and they just have everybody that was there talking about a seminar they went to. And it's about as exciting <laughs> as you would imagine a seminar being described from Cornell 50 years ago. Uh, uh, it, it is, it is hard. It was hard, hard to get through. I hopefully the story kind of picks up, but man, in our golden era of documentaries, both visually and audio wise, uh, I think sometimes the, the, the drive to get the people isn't always going to give you a fuller picture or even, and certainly not as much of a compelling one, in my opinion. Um, my pick is, uh, I don't have a pick there. Yeah. Come at me. Come at me, bro. Uh, I have a pick. Oh, uh, I've got a pick. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to double down on good Sudoku. I talked about this, um, a little while ago. Uh, but this is a new game from uh, uh, from Zach Gage, and it's kind of a reimagining of Sudoku. I mean, you still play Sudoku, but it has a lot of tools that kind of cut down on uh, the tedium. Uh, the tedium, yeah. Of like, okay, now I'm going to count these and I'm going to make all these marks. Um, and so you end up focusing instead of like spending time on seeing where a seven can be, you just tap the seven and you see the buttons, and now you're focusing on techniques. And so it's got like tens of thousands of puzzles that have been handpicked for across different difficulty levels. Uh, it has a whole mode where it teaches you different techniques. So you're, you're not spend it like, like truly playing Sudoku half of the time spent on Sudoku is just doing menial work. And this says, okay, well let's look at techniques. And, uh, and I think that's a really good evolution for Sudoku. Cause I think um, as far as like playing puzzles on paper, that is what makes Sudoku take so long compared to like to Picross or Nonograms, right? Like those, um, like those take about the same time on paper versus digital. Where this uh, feels like you get to the meat, you really start to enhance your understanding of it. Um, and I think uh, it's free to play for. Um, it, it, you could play the puzzles, and it, you get ads occasionally or it's like $4 to unlock it without ads and you get color themes, you get to access the custom mode. And so if you build a, if you build a, pu a Sudoku puzzle in custom mode or you play one, and as long if it follows normal Sudoku rules, they have a whole algorithm that will figure out a way to give the players a hint, like, okay, this is the next technique that you should use to make a move here. Um, and I think they're te teasing that they might open, they might have a way to open that up to other sets of rules because Sudoku people play with a lot of different crazy one-off rules. Um, hmm. And so it's, it's, it's super cool. And they have, they've been doing a lot of good work to update it. I think last time I talked about it on one of these programs, uh, it, I was getting stopped up on a technique because you would go to learn the technique and it would say, oh no, we generated a puzzle that doesn't have this technique in it. So you can't do anything. Um, they fixed that. Um, so they seem really good about, about active development on it as well. So uh, it's on iOS. It's on the iPhone and the iPad. It's called Good Sudoku. Right on. Yeah. Awesome. Andrew? So my, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a, an, another pitch for the Kindle here. And this is, and, and the I Oasis? would recommend... Well, I are in general, I would recommend to other e-readers out there by other companies, but the problems just haven't been very stable. I am obviously, I'm an Amazon publishing company author, so I am very biased, interest of full disclosure here. But uh, the things that have improved on e-readers in general, one is that most of them have a white background, which is key, and LED displays. The first Kindles that came out were just, oh, you just use available lighting in your room. Well. You know, I, if I try to sit down in the corner here and read a book, I can't because there's not enough light. So now with the Kindle devices and a lot of e-readers, they have built-in LED lights, lights, and they still last a long time. You get days and days and days, which is if you had one a while ago, I'm like, eh, I didn't like it. Try that. For the Oasis, I really like that little button to click to turn the page. Not for everybody. You can get like an $80 Kindle now. Also, they play audiobooks. You can plug your, you can use your Bluetooth with it, and they have Bluetooth chips in there. So if you want to play your audio, you can do that too. I think that 
that's cool. And the other thing too is that Amazon has a program. Again, I am biased, but I benefited from this. Is they have uh, Amazon has their uh, Prime members. They have their Prime reading, which is a like ten dollars a month or something along those lines. Where if you pay that, you get let me go tons and tons and tons and tons of books. You look at like there's a tons of content out there that's available. Like like most of my books are available. Like if you if you pay for Prime reading. Um, it's what's the price here? Uh, I know some of that, what the price like is. the Kindle lending library is part of just the base Kindle, right? Or I'm sorry, the base prime membership. So a lot of stuff. Yeah. You, yeah. Some, yeah. yep. So there's, there's Kindle unlimited, which is a program that like I'm part of, which is basically like, there's a tons of really quality books on it. If you go look at Kindle unlimited and you can see that, you know, the, the number of there's like I I find often find a lot of books I want like oh read it for free on Kindle Limited, nice. and there's comics there's all sorts of stuff there. It's not like a bunch of old titles that just get thrown on there. A lot of new books because there has been kind of a shift in publishing where they realize they're like they're people who just read a ton, and instead of not capturing that audience is you know what if you just you know basically make it available in a different format so you know. That's it's like, you know, it's like an all you consume for books like Netflix for books. Yeah. So yeah. that was the craziest thing when when Andrew was first starting his, uh, uh, you know, publishing career was just realizing the habits of voracious readers. And you just realize like there are just wood chippers. Like just people that are like, as fast as you can continue to pump out content, they will rip through it. It 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 was it was as somebody who's not a very fast reader, it was fascinating. You know, yeah, uh, and you you mentioned this uh, a couple of times, Andrew, but uh, I'm, I'll co-sign on getting a Kindle with a click button. I have a, I had an old Kindle before all of them had lights in them, um, but uh, it was the one that had the keyboard, had a full like. Uh, blackberry you know style keyboard and uh uh just having just having the little buttons on the side was so clutch and you know with the screen refresh of of e-ink displays and does it count does it see my swipe do i have to deal with swipe and touch like uh i kind of wish that they had made what must be relatively cheap buttons standard the way that they did led illumination yeah yeah, that's the that button, such a such a game changer. Yeah. So yeah, Kindle Limited is ten bucks a month, but like you've got like all the Harry Potter books, the Hunger Games books. There's a ton of content in there, and we do live in this golden age of like I remember when I was a kid, you know, when I was like younger, a buddy of mine went to go buy all the Star Trek original Star Trek episodes on VHS, and he was paying like twenty bucks, thirty bucks per episode. Whoa. you know, which to to, you know, to put together the entire season was going to cost that or series of dollars. Now for ten dollars a month, you get all of that, you know, through a service. And here, at Kindle Limited, for that ten bucks, you invest. You, you know, the, you, know you buy a Kindle for like the price of six or seven books. You get Kindle Limited. The amount of content you get is great. So nice. Uh, yeah, choice paralysis is a problem. <laughs> uh, but like, I'll tell you, like one of my favorite things too are like uh, these little books, like uh, statistics, a graphic guide, things like this. These are on there. And it's harder to read, easier to read this probably on an iPad, Kindle on an iPad, but still like all these like little easy to, a lot of my favorite little stuff that I like, I go, oh wow, that's there. So that's my pitch for Mr. Amazon here. <laughs> Yay, finally, somebody sticks up for Bezos. <laughs> yes, right. Gotta look out for the little man, you know, it's just uh, it's not easy being an entrepreneur. Gentlemen, it's been after. Hey, good stuff, everybody. All right, well, uh, we are gonna back again in 30. We're gonna go offline. Yeah, the guys are gonna do happy hour at uh, four central. I'm gonna be on at six. We don't, there's no cord killers today, but we are. I'm gonna do uh, marbles, so that'll be nice. cool. Check that out if you've never done it before. You don't have any excuse. Uh, hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Bye. We love you. Bye. See you.